It was a normal day for Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Homicide and murder. Yet something felt strange. Well, stranger than usual for the maniac. He had kept his wall wet with blood so the monster didn't escape from it, and there wasn't much for him to do. It was a dark night, black clouds hiding out the moon's gaze, and the street lamp's glare seemed so very faint and distant from the next, as a cool, quiet whistle for a breeze traveled around Johnny's quiet neighborhood. He sat in his room, quietly on the end of his bed, his thumbs twirling with one another as he imagined something to do, as he felt his day had not been fully completed. After a while, he simply climbed further up on his bed and laid his head on the pillow, closing his dark eyes. Hours passed as the maniac quietly slept in his room. After a few hours, a creak was heard throughout Johnny's home, to which he paid no attention to. He laid simply on his side, away from his door, eyes closed and gently breathing, almost as if this was normal for him. Footsteps could be heard if anyone was listening as they proceeded through the house before slowly creeping up the stairs each step making a quiet creak after the other. It wasn't long before the steps found their way to Johnny's door. A dark shadow could be seen from the cracks at the bottom of the frame, emitting off something, or someone. The door began to open slowly, and the dark room was filled by a darker shadow. It invited itself in, and began to creep towards the bed where Johnny was laying. The feet found themselves to the bottom of the bed, as it appeared that Johnny had not even pulled the sheets over himself and simply laid there. Now on his back, with his arms either side of his head, Johnny looked amazingly solemn for a man who kills people every day. The intruder began to crawl his way up the bed, his legs separating Johnny and beginning to trap him underneath his figure. It was as Johnny felt a breath on his face, his eyes opened to the white face of Jeff the killer. Johnny looked over his features, noticing Jeff's joker-like smile, noseless face, and burnt-off eyelids. It was at this moment Jeff groaned out sadistically, Go to sleep! He was interrupted by the fists of Johnny, causing Jeff's body to fly off him and land on the floor in front of Johnny's bed. Johnny grabbed a nearby blade in his drawers and ran off his bed, lunging for a stab towards the killer. Jeff rolled out of the way causing the knife of the maniac to impale through the floorboards, getting stuck as Johnny pulled on it to break it free. Before Johnny could, a grab around his neck and a knee into his gut caused him to let go of the blade and meet into a wall on his side with the killer's smile in his now blurring vision. As Johnny met the floor, Jeff shouted out, I told you to go to sleep! Jeff's foot began to swing backwards, before swinging forward into Johnny's hand as he caught it. He pulled on it, causing the killer to meet with the floor, an arm's length of the maniac's nearby blade. Johnny climbed onto Jeff's body, his foot resting on his chest, almost pinning him down. Jeff swiped at Johnny's leg. A cut was made in the leg of Johnny. Oh, fuck! Johnny screamed out, grabbing onto his new wound. Slouched over, wincing in pain, Johnny found a blade heading towards his forehead. He reached with a spare hand, gripping the wrist of the killer tightly. Jeff began to chuckle out. <laughs> You're fun, friend, putting up a struggle like this. Johnny simply glared into the white, always grinning face of the killer before growling out. It's only a struggle when I'm scared of death. Jeff's foot connected with Johnny's spine, launching him off his body and landing on his hands and knees. Jeff quickly climbed to his feet, turning to the maniac as Johnny slowly stumbled onto his. The killer ran towards Johnny wrapping his arm around Johnny's neck, gripping it, causing Johnny to gasp. With the blade in plain sight above them for both to see, Jeff then taunted out, Should have gone to sleep when I said. The blade began to make a direct course with Johnny's chest, going for the heart to end this conflict. Johnny made his final attempt to struggle back, grabbing the killer's wrist once more to stop the blade's course. Yet a cold feeling began to run over Johnny, looking up his spine before a warm sensation began to run onto his chest. He was bleeding. The maniac managed to fight back, removing the blade from where it had struck, pushing himself forwards from the grip of the killer and yanking the blade from his hand. Johnny swung the blade across Jeff's white face, scarring it open more from his nose, up through his eye, and upon his forehead. 
with the killer screaming in pain. Johnny pushed him towards the closed window behind them, causing Jeff to hit it with a loud thud. A crack was made. As Jeff pulled himself off from the cracked glass, his eye looked before him to find the foot of Johnny going directly towards his chest. With a solid hit, Johnny kicked Jeff in his gut, sending Jeff backwards through the window, falling onto the cold ground below. Johnny walked over to his window and looked over, watching the red puddle under the figure of Jeff. His long black hair now more apparent in his blood. Johnny climbed into the where the window once was, not yet satisfied. Gripping the blade tightly, he launched himself through the window, dropping towards the killer's body. The blade connected through Jeff's chest, Johnny's feet digging deep into his gut, squeezing out the final silent breath. Johnny twisted the blade into the corpse's chest before yanking it out. He climbed off the dead body, looking down on it with his dark eyes. Johnny then began to drag the body inside his home. As he closed the door behind himself, he looked down to the dead killer and explained, Your blood will be used to keep the monster at bay.